Hello everybody, this is I'm with me, 5, 6, 7, back with another episode, and on this episode, huh, I want to say, I don't know, I've been thinking the whole time, they're both just so good options, mm, I mean, you know what? I'm going to say it's none of our, her business because it's really not. Those quiet words of hers have hit me right in my weak spot. It, it's none of your business. I answer reflexively. Right, of course. It's nothing to do with me. Jeez! You asked about such a bad squay, and then you go off saying it yourself. We need to talk this out fully. We need to have a full sit down talk, not just a little slight one here. Because there's a whole bunch of misunderstanding going down. Chidori? Chidori? Yamete. Shitashigeni namaide nante yobanaide. Stop calling me by my first name like that. An awkward tension sells between us. I remember back when it was suggested that a three personality system might be a good idea. I've never wanted another Armadei partner around as much as I do right now. The silence is oppressive. I don't like the atmosphere in here. Huh? 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 I'm staying sure Hane's room tonight. Bye! Doesn't even give me time to respond. What the hell? I tend to speak openly and get to the bottom of whatever was. I tend to speak openly and get to the bottom of whatever was distressing her has only served to widen the rift between us further. Being honest, it's useless. I knew I should have gone with the more presidential approach. I martyred myself and stared at the closed door in silence for a while. I gazed in the lights on Chidori's textbook, which must have fallen to the floor when she stormily left her seat. Talk. Honestly. I moved my wheelchair over to her desk. She's the one who's supposed to take care of me. My hand still is as I'm about to pick it up. I thought she'd been staring at a textbook all the time, but this is... When I pick it up, Chidori's personal notebook falls open to the dog-eared page she must have been just... that she... must have just been looking at. Oh, I'm tired today. I might take a, nap, a break after this episode and nap a little bit to get my energy back as... Whoa! My energy just dropped. My Donna. Oh dear. I like the way it says. <laughs> it hadn't been on purpose, but a combination of guilt and a kind, gentle, numbing pain flows floods my chest as I find my auntie's partner's secret laid bare to me. We stare once again at the door through which she disappeared. There's always at least one student like you in a class. Someone who thinks they know everything and feels like the world is unfairly against them. But it's not the school's fault that it's boring. It's your fault that you're boring. 
I recall why he's saying for the Japanese movie after school. Jory never returned to our room last night. She didn't appear at breakfast either, so I had no choice but to wheel my way to the cafeteria where I found her sitting with Shirahane. It's, it's the look on her face now that reminds me of that quote from after school. It's an expression of arrogance, but at the same time, it's clear that she's pushing forward down a path she believes in, for better or worse. I also sense a degree of confusion from her, though, and a certain distance from what's happening around her. It's a combination of that lofty attitude of hers and her apparent confusion that really rubs people the wrong way. I miss my chance to speak with her, and the day rolls on. Uh-oh. I think I know where we are. The dress rehearsal starts first thing in the afternoon. We're all well aware that the real thing will be tomorrow, and this run-through is... Well, it's a disaster to the point where I feel like the only saving grace is that we get through it without any injuries. Jory makes so many mistakes in her technically difficult dance that she has the audience cringing. From time to time she's dancing, she seems distracted by something to the side of the stage, and each time she messes up. Uh-oh. I do finish a run through and wrapped up a pre-functionary post-mortem session. I go over to my silent amate partner. Come back to our room. Pulls a bare face. I pat her on the shoulder. This is exactly the kind of dinner I want to avoid. Sorry about that. There was something going on. <clears throat> Usually I only get an individually prepared meal at lunchtime, but with the result coming up tomorrow, the dinner lady has kindly gone out of her way to make me a special veal cutlet. However, she did it again. The girl's getting better. Three meals now are we up to? I mean, it's not like I expected it to be all smiles and laughter, but all the same. I didn't expect the mood to be so oppressive I lose my appetite. You know, usually things don't seem so bad for a good night's sleep. My amate partner sits glumly before me as I slice into the thin meat and take a large bite. It's delicious. You really can't go wrong with veal. I can't say that, Erica. I can't. I gotta disagree. I'm not a fan. Ma, Come on, the dinner lady went through all this trouble to prepare something special. Hurry up and eat before it gets cold. <laughs> Chidori doesn't respond and just continues to sit there with her knife in one hand and a fork in the other as still as a statue. That stupid board look. It never reminds me of after school. I thought you liked it enough to jot down that notebook of yours. It's even better with lemon. I smile at her and she finally looks me in the eye. You're annoyed. What? Are you sitting there waiting for your food to get cold? Then yeah, I am. There ain't nothing in this world that tastes good cold. Ice noodles. 
She draws my tender joke and gazes steadily at me, her eyes moist. You're annoyed that I, put, that I didn't listen to your warnings and kept recklessly pushing myself. Oh, that. Well, like Yatsu Shiro Senpai would say, I thought maybe it was your time of the month. I wondered if maybe the hormones were driving you crazy. I take another bite of cutlet, this time drenched with lemon and savor the blissful taste that spreads across my tongue. She turns her haughty eyes on me and squints, like she's scrutinizing the true meaning behind my words, but then... You don't want to talk to me anymore. She says. And gets to her feet. Sit down. But. I won't say it again. Jory sits back down in her seat. I put down my knife and fork and dab at my lips with my napkin before speaking again. Not an empty stomach, I don't. I get irritable. Same goes for everybody. Ever heard of someone being hangry? Anyway, that's why I'm saying we should eat first. Dory frowns and regards me dubiously, but hesitantly goes ahead and takes a bite of her cutlet. Does lean like she's starting to mellow slightly. I don't get what you're so annoyed about. It's a normal assumption to make, given that you weren't saying a word to me. More I'm saying, it looks like you're scared to open up to me, perhaps. Am I right? That first bite of food must have made her realize just how hungry she really was, as she's already taken a second and third at this point. Shidori hesitates and stops eating. We're well past the point where I'd reject you for it, no matter what you tell me. Even if you have some super weird fetish, I'll still accept you, so talk to me. Plus, we have no kink shame, kink shame rule on this channel, so don't worry about it. It's because I'm the lead, isn't it? Huh? Huh? I can't mess up at the ballet cell tomorrow because it makes Mr. Basquiat look bad. Nante partner stares down at her plate like a little girl expecting a scolding, and I can't help but laugh. What's so funny? <laughs> you're such a damn idiot. <laughs> Even now, you're so worried what I think of you? You said Sister Basquiat. Basquiat. It's true she's expecting a lot from us, and I do want to live up to that. But this, ordering a special good luck meal, I think like a total sap. I'm doing this all for you, buddy. You're lying. She mutters quietly as I continue to grin at her. 
I feel a your guilt that my auntie partner still doesn't believe me. <laughs> I'm not lying. Why, but you take care about me just as much as I care about you, right? I ask her. The arrogant look dissolves from Jidori's face and is replaced by one of bewilderment. Before she finally blushes, glances at the notebook on top of her desk. You looked at it, didn't you? You're the worst. Oh, yeah, I am. But it did make me happy, you know? Anyone would feel good knowing that someone likes them. If looks could kill, I'd have kicked it just now. But Chidori's glare only lasts a moment. The intensity of her gaze soon lessens as she hangs her head. I'll say it again. If you're struggling with something, then tell me. I may not be able to take it off your hands, but I can at least share the burden. Then silence follows. Then, Shidori lifts her head, revealing a deeply vulnerable expression. It started at, soon after my underclassman quit doing ballet. He starts to speak. She had to give it up because of the injury that I caused. At first I had absolutely no urge to dance again, but then... I saw I couldn't selfishly give up on dancing myself after having stolen that choice from her. I thought I should go on and dance enough for the both of us. That all sounds good so far. She smiles bitterly. I came back to ballet with more passion than ever before. But as I was training for my next performance, I noticed there was something wrong with my vision. Things were all distorted. At first I thought I was just sleep deprived. Then people's faces and their bodies, they began to appear bigger and smaller to me than they really were. I've heard a bit about the symptoms she's describing. Alice syndrome, huh? Yes, more properly no more properly known as Alice in Wonderland syndrome. It's a quaint name, but it really was lethal when it came to ballet, where I was out there dancing together with others. And it wasn't just people. I couldn't properly determine the size of objects either. Sometimes they appear all they even appear all twisted. I thought I thought it was kind of a punishment. Back during the case of the disappearing bunnies, I identified that she had bad eyesight of some sort, perhaps astigmatism, but... I had no idea her vision was so compromised. I can only imagine how hard it's been for her. 
部屋にこもった私を父母は環境を変えてみたらいいとここへ転入させたの。Unable to dance, I shut myself in my room. After a while, my parents made me transfer here, thinking it would be good for me to have a change of scenery. So I see. I trail off searching for the right words to say. ここへ来てしばらくは症状は治まらなかったでも He said I could come home once I recovered after arriving here There's no change in symptoms for a while but 今はもう治ってるのか Are you getting better now? ええ環境を変えたことが良かったのか徐々に後輩との事情をあなたへ打ち明けた時からだいぶ落ち着いてきた。Yes, I don't know whether it was really a change of scenery. My symptoms gradually started to abate. Ever since I told you about what happened my underclassmen, I've seen a big improvement. It's a relief to hear that she's on the mend. However, うん。いや待てよ。最近は目の症状は収まっているんだよなだったらなんで調子を落としてるんだはあ、hang on a sec if this issue with your vision has been getting better recently and what the heck happened at the rehearsal Dory wraps her arms around herself and looks at me imploringly 舞台袖に後輩の影が見えるようになったの I started seeing visions of my underclassmen at the side of the stage. Huh? You mean like her ghost? No, she's not dead, so. Shidori had bowed to dedicate herself to ballet for this girl's sake, but the mental pressure had led her to suffering from Alice Syndrome. Thanks to the change in her environment and opening up to me about her painful past, her symptoms had started to heal, but in their place she started to see the specter of the girl. Uh, it's no good. I have no idea why this is happening. It would make sense if, for example, she quit ballet and her guilty conscience was causing her to see her underclassmen. But her vision is clearing and she's able to dance again. What she told me sounds like the girl also wished for Chidori to continue wish for Chidori to continue dancing, so why? A scratch of my messy hair Flemix says why she's experiencing this phenomenon. Then You're disgusted, aren't you? Huh? You must be, after all I just told you. I look at my auntie partner, her head lowered as she stares intently at a fixed spot on the floor. It's as though she's bracing herself against some inner pain. And then I chuckle. Why are you laughing? I just told you that I listened to your worries and accept you no matter what they were. I told you I'd help you bear your burdens. Demo. But. Aria zembu hikura metete imidase. He masara o bakemotoki ga mieru krai de hikukayo. And by that I mean everything. I'm not gonna ditch you now just because you're seeing some sort of ghost. Erika. Erika? She finally looks at me in the eyes again. I'm the one who defeated the dreaded hook a hook man, remember? I flash her my feline smile for a moment. She looks astounded before she pulls her face again. But she can't believe what a fool she's talking to. So, so, ne? Right. 
<laughs> You're right. <laughs> and then for some reason she collapses into pearls of laughter that have her clutching her stomach with mirth. Isn't this where you're supposed to get all emotional? <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> I'm just so relieved. <laughs> Tears will open her eyes and her hair shakes as she laughs. I'm reminded of how envious I've been of my ballet dancing elder sister and of what I once asked her to do for me. I became convinced of her love for me. <laughs> I have to show her that her parents aren't all she's got. But there are other people who care about her. Ugh. We'll do that next episode. I hope you had fun and I'll see you on the next one. Uh -oh.